Please be seated and come to order. Court in session. All right, we are back in session. Is that Mr. Car oh, there's Mr. Carlos. All right, all counsel is, are present. The defendant is present. All jurors are present. Uh, now is the time to present the defense opening. If you wish to do so, you want to do so at this time, Mr. Watkins? Good, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. DNA investigations. Kevin Winslow's been honest from the start over a year ago. He admitted he had consensual sex with those accusers. Way back when, he was never dishonest about it. He admitted it a year ago. See, in a court of law, you gotta have the truth, but you gotta have even more than the truth. You gotta have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Those accusers aren't giving you the whole truth. Jane Doe one, she leaves out the fact that she knows who he is, she knows that he's a famous football star. And if you don't think that he's famous, ask him or him or all their friends or the tent that's outside. He's charged with kidnapping her. She wanted to get into his car. That was her choice. She wanted to. She asked to get into his car. She leaves out the fact that they went into the shopping center, crowded shopping center, and the afternoon, her dry cleaners is right there, her sushi restaurant's right there, 24-hour fitness, they park next to two cars, and they have oral sex. Per her original statement, it was not forced. She left that part out of her statement. She also says that she was menstruating. That's where the blood came from. That's what she originally told the officers. She's not giving you the whole story. Jane Doe too. She's not giving you the whole story. She knows Kellen. She knows who he is. She knows that he's a football star. She knows him by Kellen, not Kevin. She leaves out the fact that we find out later that we learn that, oh yeah, they did talk about having sex for money. Of course, that comes out months after her original statement to the police. There was sperm found. She did do a SART exam and there was sperm found. Sperm of another guy. They left that part out of the story also. We got Jane Doe 3. Now Jane Doe 3 is not going to accuse Kellum anything. Jane Doe 3 describes a man that did this to her as being a few inches taller than her. And she's 5'1 or 5'2. He's described as having a medium build an African-American man with tattoos and a medium build. It's the police that are accusing Kellen of doing that. So she won't come in here and accuse Kellen of anything. Now with news coverage of this and it gets out in the public, sure enough, here comes Jane Doe 3, I'm sorry, Jane Doe 4. She wants to be a part of this. So with a phone call to the district attorney's office, she tells a story. Now she tells a story of being driven in a car with Kelly and being digitally penetrated by multiple guys in this car as they were driving to a party. That's her first story. So the district attorney's office, based on that, files charges. They go out to visit her to get a formal statement from her and she tells a completely different story. A story about being raped in a house when she was unconscious off of two beers. She says that she's in a room, she wakes up and she's in a room and there's four other guys in the room. Her face is being pushed towards another gentleman's genitals and there's two or three other guys standing there <coughs> filming it. She talks about hearing this videotape and people around the school talking about a videotape going around. Nobody will corroborate that because it didn't happen. She'll admit to you that she had consensual sex with Kellen when she was a month before her 18th birthday and Kellen was 19. Now, here comes Jane Doe 5, created by the media. Jane Doe 5 says that he's in a jacuzzi masturbating. 
We'll find out later, months later after she gives her original statement, that she didn't see anything. She never saw him nude in any way, shape, or form. She didn't even look at him. In fact, we find out later that there was another guy in the jacuzzi that didn't see any of this. And so when Kellen's foot touches her foot, she freaks out. Why? Because that's the predator, that's the sexual predator that they see on the news. His news story was actually playing on the TV in the gym. Her husband tells her, that's the guy. And that's why she freaks out. She doesn't even see the other guy in the hot tub. Now, <clears throat> Kellen has lived a very uncommon life. He was, he is, the son of San Diego Charger, Hall of Famer, Kellen Winslow Sr. He's been in the spotlight since he was young. And when you're in the spotlight, <clears throat> when you're young, that's very difficult. But one of the key things here is, when you're in the spotlight, people want things from you. And that's just the way it is. Now Kellen, he was with his wife since they were 13 years old. Elementary school together, high school together, college, and of course now they're married. Now, there's been infidelity in his relationship. Kellen's not proud of it, but he's never denied it. He's been unfaithful, not once, not twice, but numerous times. I would not dignify these things by calling them affairs, because they weren't. There was sex. No strings attached sex. It's wrong. It's wrong, it's immoral, but it is not illegal. So, you guys are gonna have a very hard job to do. You're gonna to need to put away and not be swayed by sympathy for the accusers. You're gonna to have to not be swayed by public opinion at all. And you can't be swayed by any dislike for Kellen's cheating ways. And when you do that, and when you look at the evidence, and most importantly, the lack of evidence, there won't be any evidence showing any vaginal tearing or redness around the neck showing violence in any way, shape, or form, because it didn't happen. So when you look at the evidence, and the lack of the evidence. And you're not swayed by sympathy or dislike for Kellen's infidelity. I'm sure you'll come to the only right and just verdict there is. The verdict of not guilty. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Watkins. That's gonna conclude the court proceedings for today. Uh, as indicated previously, we're gonna be dark this afternoon. We're gonna start first thing tomorrow morning with the witnesses starting at 9 o'clock. So please remember the admonition. Don't discuss the case with anybody or form or express any opinions. Avoid any news accounts of this case from any source. And we will see you back here tomorrow morning right at 9 o'clock. Please make sure you're on time, and we'll see you at that point. All right, thank you very much. We're in recess.